Aloha, my name is Matt Anderson. In this presentation, we're going to take a look at the principles of multimedia and contiguity when used in educational design. Here we see the basic objective of the presentation. Basically, we will learn to apply these two principles in educational design. The basic concept of the multimedia principle is that when both graphics and text are used, learning is more effective. Here's an example using text only. Now if we put the text together with a graphic, will the student have a better opportunity to learn? There are several different types of graphic used in multimedia. Each type has specific uses. In the next few slides, we will look at examples of each type of graphic and then try and determine when the best time would be to use that type of graphic. Decorative graphics can spice things up or add some humor. It's important to keep in mind that they should be used sparingly as they may not increase learning and may even detract from it. Representational graphics illustrate or represent what something actually looked like. This example shows a computer with the cover removed. As you can see the graphic definitely shows or represents what the inside of a computer look like, looks like. Organizational graphics show qualitative relationship among content. This example also uses a computer. Notice the difference from the representational example. Some graphics can act as more than one type of graphic. In this case, the example is an organizational graphic, but it could also be used as a representational graphic as well. Relational graphics summarize quantitative relationships. Charts and graphs often fall into this category. Transformational graphics are used to show changes in time over space. You can see this example that shows uh, the water cycle and how it changes over time and space. Animations or video clips are often very effective transformational graphics. Interpretive graphics help us to make intangible ideas more concrete. They help us interpret ideas or things we can't normally see. The example used here is of a home network that's often difficult to visualize. Okay. Now that we have looked at the different types of graphics used in multimedia education, it's important to understand when each type should be used and when they can be used most effectively. Take a few minutes to review the chart shown which attempts to show which types of graphics are best suited for each type of learning. As you can see, some types of graphics may be well suited for several different types of content. Okay, so now we took a brief look at the multimedia principle. Next we're going to look at the second principle covered in this presentation, the contiguity principle. This principle is made up of two basic parts. 
In educational design, printed words should appear near the related graphic. Spoken words or narration should be synchronized with corresponding graphics. And we'll look a little bit closer at this. The question may arise when dealing with the contiguity principle, what happens if you use a very large detailed graphic or lots of text that make it difficult to fit everything on the screen? In that type of situation, it can be helpful to use pop-up or rollover text that can be activated using a mouse or some other input device. Here are a few examples of situations where the contiguity principle should be applied. I'll let you go ahead and read those yourself. The second part of the contiguity principle has to do with narration being synced with the related graphic. As you can see, if they're separate, the learner has to process more and may miss out on some of the learning. So, to review before we take a short quiz, here are the basics of the concepts of the multimedia and contiguity principles used in educational design. Take a few moments to look at these principles before we take the quiz. Okay, quiz time. We're now going to check to see if you've learned anything. Try and determine if each statement is true or false. Here are the answers to the quiz. As you can see, they were all false except for number two. How did you do? Did you get them right? Thank you for your participation today. Here are the resources that we used in the presentation. I hope that you learned something new. Thanks again. Goodbye.